Welcome to the beautiful Scottish Highlands. Actually, this is the North Carolina mountains. Let's just go back to the beginning. Is this the way to the treehouse? I don't know. Aren't you the navigator? I'm just trying to make sure we don't drive off the edge here. Oh, this hill is so steep and twisty. But oh look! It's like visible just right there around the corner over there. Oh, the treehouse, it looms so high over the path. It looks so cozy and remote. Nestled up in the trees and overlooking the mountains. So cool. Was that a bear though? Shouldn't they be hibernating? It's winter! We're gonna try a slight twist on our usual videos this time. We want to really dig into the historical and fictional connections to the places that we visit, show a little bit more of why these places really speak to us. We hope it's fun to watch. Let us know in the comments how it's working out. Before I ever knew I was going to move to North Carolina, I read the Outlander books. If you don't know what those are about, I'm going to give you like the quickest recap. It's about Claire, this World War II nurse that by accident travels back in time 200 years through a stone circle, just like this one. Not working for me. Anyway, she meets a Scottish Highlander there, Jamie, and they have a whole bunch of different adventures, and eventually they end up in North Carolina. Yeah, they even ran a contest with a bunch of pictures of Scotland, pictures of North Carolina. People on the internet tried to guess which was which, and everyone was wrong. Here are some examples. Let us know in the comments which you think are North Carolina and which you think are Scotland. I had kind of the opposite experience from Corey since I was already in North Carolina. When she introduced me to the show, it was exciting when they got here and I got to see how the show imagined all these different places from North Carolina as they would have been in the past. I really love staying up on this mountain. It's so peaceful, so quiet. We actually spent some time on this property last summer in this little cabin on the rock. And it's so cool when you look right into the valley here. It's so breathtakingly beautiful. It immediately reminded me of that scene in Outlander where they come to North Carolina and Jamie shows the property that he picked for the ridge, which they then call Fraser's Ridge. If you visit the area, there's a good chance you're walking on ground settled by Scots, just like the ones you see during the Frasers at Fraser's Ridge. It really does feel that epic out here sometimes. Well, now that you're in a pioneering mood, should we go check out the tree cabin? Those stairs were definitely a little bit sketchy. Let's check it out inside. Ooh, this is nice. Look at the little fireplace. That's gonna be cozy. Ooh, and that view all the way into the valley. Ooh, look at the bed. Look, there's the tree right in the house. That's so cool. best views out here on the deck. 
Let's go fly our little drony. Oh, good morning. I think you should get up. Make me a fire. So I'm not cold anymore. Because <laughs> it did get a little bit chilly in here overnight while the fire went out. I don't know, maybe we should just warm up with some breakfast. We've got our waterfall hike this morning. Yeah, I'm not so sure if it's gonna be uh, pretty in the winter. Like all the leaves are gone. It's kind of grayish, winter, cold. Yeah, so we'll see. But we have had some uh, pretty epic fog this morning. Well, it is a little bit chilly in here. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. But the really bad part was all the rain tonight. It scared me a little bit. I wasn't gonna welcome you to our treehouse. I was gonna welcome you to our 17th century ship, La Cetsi. I definitely feel very pioneery having to go outside to cook our breakfast in a little bit, but for it to be historically accurate, I don't think it's far away enough from the house because <laughs> they tend to have their kitchens outside, so in case it burned down, it didn't burn down the entire house. A lot of families were on their third or fourth kitchen because the other ones all <laughs> went up in flames. Scottish Highlanders made up the largest percentage of immigrants to North Carolina during the 18th century. Outlander gives a lot of perspective on the historical pressures that led to so many Scots leaving during this time period. It's one thing to read about the decay of the clan system on a list of historical facts, but it's another to see it brought to life on screen. You can really get a sense of why a family might have left or even been forced to leave Scotland after you learn more about the Battle of Culloden and how the aftermath affected Claire and Jamie. One of the first times we actually see North Carolina on Outlander is a scene set in the 1970s where Brianna and Roger go to the Highland Games at Grandfather Mountain, which is an actual thing. It is one of the biggest clan gatherings right outside of Scotland. Welcome to my ceremonial fire bowl. I'm gonna attempt to make a true bonfire <laughs> and appease the old god so it doesn't rain and hurricane on us again tonight. Let's see if it works. Well, this better be an improvement from me making a fire when we stayed at the bus. So I made this delicious mushroom stew the other day in the crock pot because I knew we were going to come here. And it seems that in fantasy novels, they always tend to eat a lot of stew. Also wanted to fit the pioneering mood of the North Carolina mountains. I obviously did not forage these mushrooms, even though I used to in Germany. But I'm really bad at identifying them, so I didn't want to poison this today yet. Really excited to sit by the Jenga of Death. Eat some of this delicious homemade sourdough bread. That's really good, Corey.
thanks so much for adventuring with us. And if you haven't taken advantage of our limited time offer, please subscribe now for more fire mishaps and random dog footage.